Hey everyone, uh, for the longest time I've wanted to do a video on how to solder properly. I've, I've been doing it for quite a while now, and through much uh, frustration, anger, and a few tips here and there, I've generally come up with what I would consider to be a foolproof method on how to uh, solder good, clean connections. Now let's take a look at uh, what we've got laid out here. So first off, you're definitely going to need a soldering iron. Um, you're going to need something that's at least 40 watts in my opinion, and you're going to need uh, generally a, uh, a chisel tip head. Um, you do not want a small pointy head. That's for doing really uh, small microcircuitry. Uh, you're going to want something pretty much about this size, uh, something that can hold a decent amount of heat in it, and you can just dump it right into that connection. So you don't want a head that's really too small or too big. Uh, this is a generally good size. Um, secondly, you're obviously going to need solder. Um, you're going to need uh, uh, wire strippers. You're going to need a connector to obviously work with. Um, and then after that, you're going to have uh, an option here. You can go with shrink tube, you can go with electrical tape, or you can even go with uh, what they call le liquid electrical tape. Um, this is a uh, I've used this in the past and it does work. I'll say that about it. Um, but I found it to be messy and just simply hard to work with. It's kind of like painting, it just gets all over the place. So these are generally my two um, options that I use. My personal favorite is the shrink tube itself. Um, if you're gonna need, use shrink tube, you're gonna need a heat source to essentially shrink it um, to the size that you want it to be. And you can't really use the soldering iron, at least not not that I've found. So you're gonna need some kind of a heat source like a, a heat gun or a lighter or this I have one of the jet lighters. They're kind of cool. Show you if I can get it to go. Yeah so uh, that's generally what I use uh, but with this you got to be careful you will just burn everything up. Now one thing you might have noticed or probably not is I actually have a 80 watt uh, soldering iron here. Uh, that's way too powerful for pretty much everything that I'm doing. So what I did was I have a um, what they call a soldering station and not only does it let you a uh, place to put your soldering iron and have a sponge and stuff but really the best part of it is it lets you regulate the power. So what that means is you can get a soldering iron that's way too powerful and then you can just regulate it down to what you want it to be. Uh, other than that, I have something to hold the connections and other things, and then you may even want to try gloves. Uh, this I usually only wear them on one hand, and it allows me to hold and touch things that are way too hot to generally touch. With all that said, uh, let's, uh, let's get into soldering a connection. So in this next part, we're going to prepare and strip our wires. Um, when it comes down to wires, it's good to have a good quality uh, silicone wire. Uh, when I say uh, silicone, I'm not actually talking about the wire. They are uh, best to be uh, copper, but in this case, uh, the silicone wire um, is really the, um, the insulator on, on top of the wire, uh, or essentially the rubber. Um, other than that, uh, you can either go, you usually run anything from 16 to 10 gauge. Uh, I, this is a 12 gauge wire and it's usually probably the safest bet you can you can have. Um, 10 gauge is for really high amp applications and 16 gauge is for generally very small uh, kits. So uh, when in doubt go with uh, 12 gauge wire and that's what we have here. So stripping the wire it's pretty simple. Um, you take your wire strippers right here and usually I cut off just I can show you just about this much, about the about the <clears throat> the size of this head, and I'm going to find because this is 12. I'm going to put it in the 12 right there, and generally you go like that, turn it a little, and there you go. I go here, put it in the 12, turn it a little. In, and off you go. And you don't really have to twist them. 
but you can if you want. I usually do. And that's what that looks like. Now, in this next part, I wanted to talk about uh, maintaining the tip of your soldering iron. It's pretty important. Uh, so one thing you want to do is have a wet sponge with you. And um, basically, you want to clean it off in a sense that you want to have solder on your soldering iron tip, but you don't want to have so much that it's dripping off. So generally, what you're going to do is you're going to put solder on it like that, and then you're going to kind of just wipe off the excess and make sure that there's a good coating of solder protecting uh, your soldering iron tip. And this is so that um, the tip doesn't oxidize like this part back here. And uh, the cleaner you keep the, your tip, the, be the better your soldering iron will be able to dump heat right from this head into whatever you're trying to heat up. All right, the next part is to essentially tin or solder, apply solder to, to your connections before they're made. So you're gonna put solder here on this connection and then we're gonna put them on both of these connections. So what we're do is tip a little bit. Now keep in mind what you wanna do is heat up the object you wanna apply solder to and then touch the solder to that, that component, just like this. And push it in there. What you don't want to do is put solder on your tip and then try to somehow drip it on, like make a big bulb or something and then try to wipe it on. That's, that's exactly what you don't want to do. So, let's just clean that off. So what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to warm up this uh, this end, and then until it gets hot. So, and then I can just push the solder right into it, just like that. Um, really, the the concept here is to understand that uh, solder goes to the nearest heat source. So when I touch it, it sticks to this soldering iron really easily. And that's simply because the soldering iron is hot. The solder is going to follow the heat and it's gonna to go to the nearest one. So my job is to use the soldering tip head, dump the heat that's already built up in this head, and then uh, touch the solder to the wire instead. Now one little trick you can do is just put a little bit of solder right there and then touch it there and that'll help bridge the gap and, and really push the heat through. And then you wait just a little bit. And then it'll get hot enough. And there is waiting. And you just pump it right in there. There we go. Put a little extra on this one, just use it up. And your connection should be nice and shiny. And I'll clean this off again. Just, and I'm just brushing it right off. And now I'm gonna do this last one that you can't see underneath here off camera. Let me just put a little bit more on here. Heat that up. Go. Mm -mm. There we go. And that should be enough. So the solder is, so these connections are now tinned. All right, so now it's finally time to actually join the connections. So the first thing what we're going to do is put any connector covers or um, shrink wrap you're going to use on your wires. I've forgotten to do this many times and it's kind of annoying so just put those on here and have them ready when you're done. So now we're going to do the red wire first and the positive is there and we're just going to kind of 
put it right there. So let's get the soldering iron out. Get it off. Get that off a little bit. Now I'm going to go like this, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this bottom part up. Get it so that I can see it turn to liquid. And now I'm going to melt that down a little bit. Get that heated up. And now I'm going to push that down. Put it here. And I'm just going to kind of push it right onto it. There you go. And that's it. It's done. And I just wait and I wait. And. That is strong, and it looks nice and silvery too. Now I'm going to take this off and run my shrink wrap up to there. Get my lighter, push it up nice and high, and because I have my gloves on, I'm not too concerned. And then you just. And that's done. Now let's do the other one real quick. All right, now let's do the second part. So first thing, I'm gonna just wipe my tip off real quick. Now I'm gonna heat this up. Let's heat it up. Heat this up. Feel that moving. Now, I'm going to put this right on top of there, and I'm just going to push it down. Let the solder fall right into place. Push it down and in, just a little bit. And that's it. That's done. Tip. That. Turn my soldering iron down. Take this out, and nice strong connection right there. There you go. Now I'm going to take my shrink wrap, slide it up right into there as far as it'll go, and then take this. And that's it. Nice strong connection. There you go. And last but not least, that is the final product.